Hello everyone, photographer Andre Designs here with a new retouch video. Alright, so today I want to make this video quick, <laughs> hopefully. Alright, so this uh, photograph was taken with a D750 Nikon camera. Uh, the shutter speed was 1 over 200 at f1.8. I was using the 85mm lens at ISO 100. Alright, so this is Lightroom right now, and I'm going to uh, press Ctrl E to take it over to Photoshop. Alright, so now that we're in Photoshop, um, this photograph was taken with natural light. Uh, most of my portrait sessions are natural light. Once I'm in studio, you know I have to use the studio lights. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is to apply uh, frequency separation to this image. I will leave a donor link in the description for you to download the frequent separation actions and along with the other actions I have here from here to here and once you download the action um, you can come to uh, windows and go to actions or press alt f9 on your keyboard and you pull up the action panel it will look like this and then uh, you can just drag your action over to it and it will appear here to turn your actions as a button you can just click on that Alright, so let's get right to it. Make sure that you're using a soft brush when you're using the frequency separation. This was taken in RAW, so it's a 16-bit image, so I'm going to edit in 16-bit. Alright, so just applying the frequency separation action. So let's look at, alright, so what we're going to do, we're going to go to the mixer brush. I took my mixer brush out. It was under brush. Once you hold on on brush, you should see um, the mixer brush there. All right. Ensure that the mixer brush is cleared before you start mixing. Um, for the wetness, it's 2%. For everything else, it's the same. Uh, the brush, ensure that you're using a rounded brush, a rounded soft brush. Uh, any one of the soft brush you should be able to use, but um, just ensure that it's rounded. All right. All right. So let's go to the editing. All right, let me just move this over a little bit. So I just zoomed up the uh, image, bring it over here, and then I'm working on the low frequency layer. So I'm just gonna get my brush smaller. Gonna zoom up some more. Good. All right, so using the mixer brush, what it does, it flattens your image, right? And once it flattens the image, if there is any pimple or um, acne, well, acne and pimple, same thing, if there's any acne or blemishes on the skin, it softens it or flattens it so it's easier for you to remove it from the model's skin. All right. Also, it evens out the skin. So if you have, well, it's basically the same thing. If you have like a dark area right here, you can mix it and it somewhat evens out. All right. So let's do this right here. When you're mixing, if you're in the highlighted area, you stay in the highlighted area and then you release the mouse and then start doing it again on um, another area. For example, um, right here is dark, so I just mix it and then over here is light, so I just release and just start doing it over this side. Alright, so I'm going to go under the model's eye because it's... I want to flatten here as well. I'm going to flatten here as well. Let's look at it before and after. Before, after. Good. It's pretty easy. You just have to know where to, um, to mix and where not to mix. And when to mix. <laughs> Alright. That looks good. Let me come down to the model's neck and do the same. So I'm working in the lighted area and the dark areas. There are times though that you may have to go from the dark area to the light area just to blend it out a little bit. Like what I'm doing right here now. So I'm actually moving from the dark to the light area just to blend it out. Let's look at it before and after. Before and after. Good. Do the chin. Come down to the model's shoulder. Uh, 
All right, good. That looks good. Let's look at the before and after. All right, so we're gonna go down to the models arm. All right, so I'm just gonna mix out these these um, blemishes here. All right. I hope you guys checked out my um, behind the scene uh, video for the last sh shoot I did, and I also edited did a retouch video for that um, behind the scene. Hope you guys check it out and hopefully learn something from it. All right, that looks good. Good. Let's look at the before and after now. All right, good. So the next step is to remove um, the blemishes and stuff from the skin. So we're going to go to the high frequency layer. And then we're going to come over to the clone stamp tool. You can press S on your keyboard for the clone stamp tool. And then we're just going to sample. Let me just zoom this up a little bit. We're going to sample an area by holding down an alt. So I'm going to sample right here. All right, so I'm going to sample right here and click and then get rid of the hair from the model's face. Sample and click. Sample and click. Just getting rid of some of the bugs from the eye. So the model did her own makeup, as usual. Most of my models do their own makeup. Because um, we want it to look as natural as possible. So we just have them do their own makeup sometimes. But, uh, well, for most of my personal shoots, they do their own makeup. And... Um, for like paid shoots, I try to have a makeup artist on set. Uh, so the work is a little bit easier. <laughs> All right, so that looks good. All right. Good, so that was a quick fix. The model's face is clean, so I mean, we don't have a lot of work to do. And once you apply the mixer brush, it will eliminate, you know, most of the blemishes on the skin. So that's a good thing. And also, if you check, if you look on the model's skin, you can see that we still have a lot of texture in the model's skin. It doesn't look um, blurred out and fake, yeah? Because you do not want to have that on your images. Images should look natural as possible. All right, so that's it though. Let me just come right here. All right, so I guess that's it for the face. We're gonna come down to the, um, the model's neck and we're going to remove some of the lines from the neck. So I'm just gonna sample and just go right across. And that's it before and after there's nothing else I need to do nothing else there I need to do let me go down to the models hand remove that all right that's good all right so we need to remove this from the models um, dress not sure what those are all right Let's see if there's anything else I need to remove this as well and this and that remove some of the veins all right so I don't think there's anything else I need to remove from the model's dress. 
think that's it for now all right so the next step is to apply dodge and burn all right my favorite <laughs> all right so i'm gonna go over to the dodge and burn section here i'm gonna press b on the keyboard for my brush and ensure that the flow is at one percent all right so i'm gonna start with working on the dodge uh, not the dodge the um burn which is the last one here i'm gonna get my um brush a little bit smaller and then I'm just going to paint on the dark area. Let's look at it before and after, before and after. So what I'm basically doing is to shape the model's face. Because normally when you add, w normally when you do the mixing, it will flatten the image and then you will not have that shape anymore. So that's why you need to do um dodging and burning all right and when normally when the makeup has been applied it's basically the same thing all right i don't think i like what's happening here I, i'm gonna just gonna delete this no i'm not gonna delete it. i'm gonna just lower the opacity so about right there because it was too bright for me all right, that works for me Alright, so I'm going to still use the same um, dodge and burn uh, action, our layers, and just do the same thing down here. So you just have to know where to burn <laughs> and where to dodge. And it's pretty simple. Whenever you have a shadow at a certain uh, section of the model's body, you burn there. And wherever you have highlights, you dodge there. So that's basically what you do. Sometimes if there, if, if the area is already highlighted, uh, there are times that you don't need to highlight it anymore. You can just add a little dodge around it and it will pop. All right. For example, this section right here is highlighted. There is no need for me to highlight it. And there is no need for me to add any dodge to it either because it's highlighted yeah <laughs> and the sun was coming from that's where the light was actually coming from all right so that looks good let's look at the before and after for this before after go down to the model's arm and do the same thing i'm just gonna apply the dodge right here in the center Then I'm going to get the arm um, burn and I'm just going to burn to the bottom of the hand and then the top. Let's look at the before and after for that. Before and after. See, it gives it a shape. It was flat and now it isn't. Yeah, so that's a cool thing about dodging and burning. All right. I could also put some um, burn here as well just to shape the model's um breast area here let me just see the difference it gives it a shape it's more formed all right good so that's it for that portion of the dodge and burning let's look at the before and after for everything before and after good i noticed that i think here is uh some makeup was actually on the model's um, outfit right here. Let's see if we can fix it. I'm going to go back. Oh, no. I'm going to create a new layer. Control, Shift, Alt, E. Then Control, J to duplicate it. And then I'm going to get the clone stamp tool. And see if I can clone up here and get rid of the makeup. I'm gonna clone right here and I'm gonna come down here and so you see what I did? I just went I just copy from the line right here and then bring it down. Actually I have to do it right here. Alright. So that's a good thing to follow. If you have a line like this, all you have to do is put your get your brush um as big as possible 
and then just um go over it alt and then click and then move to the area that you want to um adjust so that's basically it all right so that looks good let's look at it before and after before after it doesn't look perfect but you wouldn't know <laughs> you wouldn't know but for the last part there i think i want to adjust it a little bit so that's it all right that looks good let's see right here oh no good all right so the next step now is to color the image i'm going to go to camera raw i'm still going to work on that same layer right there just going to go to Control a Control shift a for camera raw all right let me go to auto and see what auto looks like auto isn't bad i love using auto actually um hmm yeah so i'm gonna use auto and then i'm just gonna tweak it a little bit so let me just tweak my clarity like uh, no i'm not gonna add any clarity to it but i'm going to make some adjustment to the uh contrast all right there is good then i'm gonna go over to the asl the a no the hsl uh, um, adjustment and i'm gonna go to the hue i'm gonna play with the greens as usual i'm always playing with the greens so right there should be good let's play with the yellow a little bit um that looks okay let's look at it before and after mm, i think it's fine all right okay i think i'm gonna work with this so i'm gonna press okay then i'm gonna go down to the adjustment layer here and then i'm gonna go to color balance and I'm going to go to shadows and I'm going to apply five. Let's look at the before and after for everything. Before and after. Before and after. I may want to clean our eyes up a little bit. Just a little bit. So I'm going to go back over to the actions here. Click on um, clean teeth and eyes. I'm going to get my brush and my brush is at one percent i'm gonna put it at um the flow at 21 percent and i'm just gonna paint good that looks good it doesn't look fake which is good but i think i want to lower the opacity a little bit so about uh 72 percent let me look at it before and after all right that looks good that looks really good perfect all right um you can also make adjustment to the color in the background by using um uh, selected colors uh, our selective color and then you can just tell it what color you'd like to adjust so if you want to adjust the green you can click on green and you have a lot of different option here to adjust the green uh the background so you don't necessarily have to use um the camera option but i like using the camera option all right and if you want to adjust the yellow all right for example the red that would be for our outfit you can change the color for that as well just by using the selective color all right so you, again you don't necessarily have to use the camera raw but i use i enjoy using the camera raw all right so let me bring this back here to zero oops what did i do let me just undo that good so that is it for the image again let's look at the before and after so before and after 
all right guys so thank you for watching i hope this video actually helped um someone uh to be better with their retouching um some people have been asking for videos like how to remove the subject from the background and stuff like that i really don't want to do videos like that because my main focus is basically you know sharing my knowledge of how i retouch the images and not you know removing uh images from the background place on another background and stuff like that i want to stick to retouching just retouching change the color of the background and stuff like that just retouching because retouching is very important removing the images from the background is not so important as you know retouching the image you want to go to a, a nice location get that location um and keep that background because that's what your clients want to see that same background you can find other videos on youtube though that will help you to remove images from the background i might do it but i want th the main focus of this of these videos is basically just to teach you how to retouch the skin all right but i really appreciate um you know the feedback from you guys and i'll be doing more behind the scene more video I should be uploading a behind the scene for this one as well. Not sure when I'll be able to do it, but I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do some behind the scene for studio as well. Because most of you would like to see that. Um, once again, guys, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Turn on the notification bell. So once a new video has been uploaded, you'll be notified. And let's save the image for Instagram. Alright, so you can go to export and save for web and then all you have to do is to just change this to 1080 and just save it to wherever you want to save it so i'm going to save it to my desktop and that's the image so this well this is for web as well as instagram so you can upload it to either um but when you're going to be saving it for print you have to save it for the full size and um yeah you get better resolution when you're printing your image thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for more videos bye bye when the night is over my life is over Cause I start thinking again About our time